Hi everyone, so here we have the typical setup of the things that we've been doing when doing refraction, which is a little piece of glass and some air, and this is the normal that I've already drawn, because it's always better to have the normal drawn. And remember that in air, light is fast, and that in glass, light is slow. So these are the things that we need to remember. Now, in this case, I am interested in what happens when light tries to come out of glass and into the air. So, let's do what we always do. We start with, first thing, the ray. So the ray is trying to come out this way. And then, well, I ask myself, which way is it going to go out? Well, first thing, as always, I need to draw my wavefronts, and my wavefronts are perpendicular to my array and roughly evenly spaced. And now this guy here, once it reaches the air, it's going to go fast. So let's say it's going to move this much. And this guy here, which is in the glass, is not going to go so fast. Because remember, light moves slow in the glass. So this guy is only going to move, let's say, this much. So then when I draw my new wavefront, I'm going to see that now my new wavefronts are like this. And if I unite these wavefronts, remember, perpendicularly with my ray, I'll see then that my ray is more tilted this way. So if I look at the angles, you know, this is the angle of incidence, this is the angle of refraction, I can see that the angle of incidence is always smaller than the angle of refraction. And I go, well, okay, well, that seems interesting, but I don't see the relevance. But the relevance comes when I start taking this a little bit further. So I, what if I take this guy and I move it a little bit this way? Well, if I move it a little bit this way, then this angle here is also going to get bigger. So, for example, this way. Hmm. Now, stop and ask yourself for a moment, can I move this guy this way as much as I want, or is there a limit? Well, let's try. Now, there's a moment where if I move this guy enough this way, now this guy is just going to come out at this angle, at a 90 degree angle. But if this guy does this, it's never going to come out. There is no refracted ray, which means that for a certain angle of incidence that we call the critical angle and remember that this little letter here is called theta and it's a Greek letter so for the critical angle there is no refracted ray light tries to come out but it just can't for anything bigger than this it's just going to reflect completely and we call this thing total internal reflection let me write this down for you so that we don't forget so this is called total internal reflection. Good. So now we know that there's a certain angle called the critical angle for which there is total internal reflection. For, the criteri for any angle equal or bigger than the critical angle, nothing will come out. But we would like to be able to calculate this because this is physics. We don't just do drawings, we do numbers. Now, in order to calculate the critical angle of a material, all we need to do is apply Snell's law. Now, in case you forgot, Snell's law says the following thing. So, Snell's law says N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Sometimes I write theta i or theta r. It really depends on your taste. I like 1 and 2, one, two and 2 because then it's sort of clear where it's coming in and where it's coming out. Anyway, here's my normal. Remember, here's my angle of incidence. Well, here's my ray that's incident and this is my angle of incidence. Here's my refracted ray and this is 90 degrees, which is my angle of refraction. So now, now what I would like to find is this angle here. 
this is theta 1. This is the angle of incidence that will give me a 90 degree angle of refraction. So this is obviously theta 2 and that's just 90 degrees. This is of course N1 which is the refractive index of the glass which I don't know because I'm just going to assume any kind of glass now in order to deduce this formula and later on I can replace it by actual values and then of course N2 is just air so it's just equal to 1. Okay, So now I can just take this formula here and replace everything that I know and just leave what I don't know which is theta 1 which is in this case the critical angle so I'm going to stop calling it theta 1 and I'm going to call it theta C for critical angle. Okay, N1 I don't know so I'm just gonna leave it N1 sine of theta 1 which we said is the critical angle equals N2 which is just air so it's just 1 times the sine of 90 now if you know anything about trigonometry you will know that sine of 90 is 1 if you don't believe me just put it in your calculator therefore we get that N1 sine of the critical angle is just 1 and from here, I can just deduce that the sine of the critical angle equals 1 over N1. And with this formula, I can get the critical angle of any material. But remember, this will only happen when light travels from glass to air, from a medium with a high refractive index to a medium with a low refractive index. And the reason for this is that when it does this, this angle is bigger than this one. When it does the other way around, then this angle will always be big, uh, smaller than the other one and therefore there will be no angle for which this will ever be 90 degrees. So this only works coming out of glass, it never co works coming into glass. Okay. So the whole purpose of this was to show you the formula. Now please go ahead and do the short numerical exercises which you should be doing if you were watching this. Have fun.